morning and welcome. My name is Jessica Sable and I will be your hymn leader and your worship leader this morning. I'm here to help you lead through this worship. If you've come this morning seeking, we pray that you have leave having found faith, hope, love, Christ, and friendship. We are a faith community open to all people. No matter who you are or where you come from, we are grateful you are here and so is Jesus. We have gathered here today to celebrate the goodness and love of God who has welcomed each and every one of us. Because God has welcomed us, we are called to welcome others. So we're talking about hospitality today and we're going to do that by looking through the eyes of a child. We're diving into the 1982 smash hit E.T and seeing how Elliot and his friends welcomed E.T. and they both benefited from each other's hospitalities. Please bow your heads and pray with me. God, thank you for walking us up today, waking us up today. God, thank you for the welcoming, welcoming us into this place of worship. As we worship, we pray that the Holy Spirit opens our hearts, minds, and doors to welcome any and all who come into our lives just as we have welcomed us, just as you have welcomed us. Give us the courage to welcome others. Please join me in our opening hymn, um, page 370 in your red hymnals, Victory in Jesus.
you call to worship. I will read the light print and you can read the dark. Welcome to a time of wonder. Welcome to hear God's words that inspire and challenge. Hospitality that teaches us how to open our lives to others. Amen. Good morning, beautiful people of St. Paul. My name is Brian, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here. It is a delight to be with you this morning. And with those who are watching and worshiping with us online, um, we're going to have a moment for the young and young at heart up here. So I'd like to invite any of our youngest disciples up for a bit. Well, hello. Good to see all of you today. Hello. So today, I want to talk to you about hospitality. Do you know what hospitality means? No. Hospitality is about making others feel welcome. Making them feel like they belong with us. Like, you know, when you come to church, we want you to feel like you're welcome here. That's why we stand at the door and say, hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Walter. Hello, Helen. Hello. There are certain things we do in our lives to help others feel welcomed. Yay, that you're already learning. See, that's hospitality. That's great. Saying hello to others. And you know, one of the things we do in our world is we have a welcome mat at our house. One of the most hospitable people I know is my dog, Bodie. This is his welcome mat. So that when others come to our house, he, they know that they, he, he is telling them that he's happy they're there. He says, welcome to my house. The humans just live here with me. And you know, when people come to the door, Bodie likes to greet them. He wags their tail to show them how happy he is. And that's what we should do with hospitality. We show people we're happy and glad they're there. And it's, this is important because the Bible teaches us that Jesus has welcomed us. So we are supposed to welcome others. Doesn't matter whether you're at church or at home. You want any of your guests to feel welcome and loved. Like, I bet when you all go to your grandma and grandpa's house, you feel pretty welcome there, don't you? They make you feel really special. Yeah. yeah. What are some other ways do you think you could show hospitality? Maybe if you're at school or at home. Could you get them like a snack or something to drink? You could say, are you thirsty? Are you hungry? And then you'd help them so that they would be able to relax and be at your home. So that's a little bit about hospitality today. So can we pray about that together? <laughs> Let's pray. Do this. Yes, perfect. Jesus, thank you for welcoming us. Help us to welcome others. Then let us do it all out of love. Amen. <laughs> Thank you all. You can. Oh, and I have some little gifts for you today to show you. You can color these in sometime. These are a special little hospitality treat. Helen can have one too if she wants. So you can color those. That's to remind us that hospitality is making people feel welcome. And that says, you are invited. And our Sunday school meets at 945 on Sunday mornings. So that's something for you to learn more about hospitality. Okie dokes. Kiki, kiki. Okay, thank you all very much.
Please join me in the hymn of preparation, singing Amazing Grace in our red hymnals on page 378. Please stand if you are able. I'll read you the scripture today is Hebrews 13 1 through 2 keep loving each other like family don't neglect to open your homes to guests because by doing this some have been hosts to angels without knowing it the word of God for the people of God Thank you, Jess. Friends, please pray with me and for, for me. Holy Spirit, you have welcomed us here today. And you have called us your children. Holy Spirit, open our hearts, our minds, all the way to our souls so that we can welcome others. And Holy Spirit, as you have welcomed me, May I abide in you and speak so that you can be heard. Amen. Well, good morning, St. Paul. Good morning. My name is Elliot. And I've come cross country today to tell you about the wildest adventure I had 41 years ago. So needless to say, being 10 years old then, I look really good for my age now. And I sincerely hope that none of you disagree with that. And as I've grown up, kind of reflected on that adventure, I've realized that incredible adventure I went on was all about hospitality. Here's what I learned. Hospitality can be a little scary at first. Because when you're really committed toward welcoming people, you don't know who's going to show up. That's what happened when my friend E.T. first came. He showed up, and the grown-ups, they got pretty scared. They tried to hunt him down. 
capture him. Now I get why they were afraid, because to be honest, I was a little afraid too. I had never seen anyone that looked like E.T. before. He was different than me, and I was different than him. Frankly, we freaked each other out a bit. But then after I got past that initial shock, I got a little curious. And when we are willing to become curious about people, we suddenly aren't afraid of them. That's how we get past that initial fear of those people, whoever those people are for you. A spirit of curiosity. That's what breeds a culture of hospitality. When we practice curiosity, we have this desire to want to learn about people, to welcome them, so that we can experience them and learn from them. Now, the grown ups. They were just trying to control my friend. They had experienced so many scary things as they had grown up that they had forgotten how to be curious. But E.T. and I wanted to share our lives together. I shared my toys. I shared my pet fish. The things that were important to me I let him experiment with, play around with. And that showed E.T. that I was a safe person for him. Because then E.T. started to share some of his gifts with me. He could make objects fly. He could bring plants back to life. He could heal wounds. He expressed himself creatively with my little sister, Gertie. I was furious, but I'm also still wearing the same thing I wore 41 years ago, so nobody should be coming to me for fashion advice. Because we had created a place of welcome for both of us, we were able to share our gifts with each other. That's the beauty of hospitality. It's not just a gift that we're offering other people. It's a gift for us. When we welcome others, they are welcome to share their gifts with us because we have given up full control over our space and allowed them to be part of our community. This is the blessing of hospitality that I learned. When you welcome people, especially the people who are different from you, they start to become your teacher. You experience blessing from them and your spiritual life starts to expand. And that goes for any type of difference that exists in our world, whether it's racial, ethnicity, gender identity, neurodiversity. There is a blessing in opening ourselves up to other people. And hospitality isn't just welcoming others. It is that, but there's also more to that. Hospitality is accepting others into your space and letting them claim it as their own. Hospitality is let, not just letting others into your space, but also letting them claim it as their own. At least that's the Christian version of hospitality. Because there's also the industry of hospitality, which I mean, you can learn good things from. I mean, growing up in Disney, I saw some remarkable acts of hospitality. 
but there's also a difference between the industry of hospitality and Christian hospitality. Christian hospitality isn't just about welcoming our friends. It's not just about welcoming people who are like us. We're called to welcome the stranger. In our scripture passage this morning, that word that is translated as guests, that is the Greek word philoxenia. There are two parts to that word. First part is philo, familial type love, one of the words that is translated as love. Like we know the city of Philadelphia, brotherly love, it gets its roots from this word philo. And then the second part, xenia, it means foreigner or stranger, somebody from outside your normal life experience. So to put these, this word together, philo, xenia, it is literally holding a familial like love for a foreigner, a stranger, someone outside your normal circle. And it's no secret that we are living in a world of xenophobia in multiple ways across multiple nations. But when we commit to following Christ, we are called to be people of philo xenia, love of strangers, foreigners, those who are different outside our normal circles. And sadly, that's not what our world often sees from the church because we let our preconceived biases and judgments of other people, which frankly isn't all of us because we're all human, but we back away from those who are different because we have that initial fear like I had with ET and the grown-ups had too. But then Jesus invites us to sort of backing away to lean in so that we can be curious, so that we can listen and hear their stories, and we can learn from them. And frankly, we don't practice Christian hospitality until we're offended by who is welcomed at Christ's table right next to us. Jesus and his disciples weren't killed because they got along with everybody. It's in part because they welcomed and empowered the people who society considered less than. As activist Dorothy Day once said, I only really love God as much as I love the person I love the least. Or as one meme, which is just a social media post, said, when you learn how to sit with your Judas, you'll understand the love of Christ. During World War II, there was this small village in France called Les Chambeaux. And this place had become a safe haven for Jewish refugees from the Nazi death camps. Now, when you have thousands of people coming in and out of your little village, people might take notice of something going on might draw some suspicions. And that is what happened. And the Trochme family, who were the leaders of this effort, had the spotlight put on them. The authorities found out what they were doing and made plans to arrest the father, Andre. So on one evening, the police show up to the front door around dinner time. And the family opens the doors, knowing exactly what is about to happen. And even though they knew why the police were there, the entire family and the police sit down to have dinner together at the family's request. The officers tried to decline, saying, we don't have the heart to eat at the table of someone we're about to arrest. But Magda, the mother, kept on insisting. 
And when she was later asked, how could she possibly share a meal with the people who were arresting her husband? She just said, what are you talking about? It was dinner time. They were standing in my way. We were all hungry and the food was ready. Friends, we don't get to pick and choose who deserves hospitality. Not when we realize that we were once a stranger to Jesus too. The life of Jesus commands us to make room for those who have been excluded elsewhere. When Jesus tells his followers to invite the poor, the crippled, and the lame, and the blind in Luke 14, he is telling his followers to invite those who are explicitly forbidden to be part of the religious community back in the book of Leviticus. So let's bring it to today. For us, that means that we are called, the people following Jesus in today's world, to look at the people who society rejects, perhaps even sometimes the people who the church rejects, and we welcome them to be God's honored guests. If we dare to embrace Christian hospitality the way Jesus imagines it, we ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, who has been excluded from our religious community? And after we ask that, we ask, then how are we going to provide a place of sanctuary for them? A place where their sacred worth is affirmed. A place where they can share their gifts. Christian hospitality not only removes the barriers between people and God, it removes the barriers between people. In the book of Acts, we have this remarkable story where the Apostle Philip baptizes an Ethiopian eunuch. And this isn't just about an Ethiopian eunuch, a racial and sexual minority being welcomed into God's kingdom. It's also about healing between two people groups. Because the ancient Jewish people that Philip comes from considered eunuchs less than human. And yet this is who the Holy Spirit of God sent Philip, an entrusted apostle, apostle with the gospel of Christ. This is who he was sent to. A eunuch who, from Philip's viewpoint, would have been impure in just about every way. Ostracized from God and from community. They couldn't take part in the religious services and didn't have a place to belong in the larger social arena because they just didn't have a place where they fit. Because eunuchs were educated and rich. So they didn't belong with the poor and beggars. And they didn't fit with the rich religious Jews either. And yet this individual, all Philip can say is, what is there to prevent me from doing this? When we welcome and find a place of belonging for the people who frankly sometimes nobody else wants, that is when we are practicing Christian hospitality. And that is when the kingdom of God comes on earth as it is in heaven. And the kingdom of God can be unleashed through that type of hospitality. Because you know what? And we don't know this for sure, but it's rumored that that Ethiopian eunuch went back to their hometown, homeland, and became the evangelist that would go and spread the good news throughout all the country. And you know your pastor, because we talked before I came here, and your pastor told me a story that he had experienced a couple of years ago. He was at his church's service on a Monday night, a night where they would invite the community to come and have a home-cooked meal. And then, for those who wanted to stay, 
worship together. And on that night, there was one gentleman who came, and this individual had quite the reputation around town. And truthfully, even had some past incidents with the church. So he made it through dinner all right. But then a couple minutes after the worship service started, we heard this man talking very loudly because he was essentially having a conversation with the voices in his head. So one of our church leaders asked him to be quiet and some problems started. He got enraged and eventually stormed out, throwing things as he left, kicking the front door of the church. We ended up having to call the police. And your pastor told me he wasn't feeling particularly hospitable toward that guy at that time. Because he had come in and roughed up a sacred place. Now it was plainly obvious that this man had some severe mental health, mental health struggles. And that he wasn't really taking care of himself. If he had medications, he wasn't taking them, or they weren't working, or something was missing. But then later in the week to come, the church leaders learned that sometimes this man had access to his medications, and sometimes he didn't. And during the times he didn't have them, it was because his brother, or someone else who was close to him, had sold his meds for drugs. There are always boundaries in hospitality. We can't allow dangerous behavior that is threatening to the safety of others. But what your pastor told me is that maybe before he just saw that individual as an irresponsible person who refused treatment. He should have gotten curious. That maybe they could have just allowed him to have the conversations he was having with himself. It was distracting. But maybe that's what he needed at that point in time. Sometimes a prayer that... God invites us to pray is for God to give us the people only God could want. Now God wants everybody. And I think your church is a place who wants everybody too. But sometimes the people who others reject are the people who God sends. Now you're not always going to be ready for it. 41 years ago, I was not ready for what happened to me. But I got curious, and because I got curious, I practiced bold hospitality. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. I loved a being, a stranger, who I knew nothing about. And here we are today, 41 years later, still talking about this story. And friends, here in the church, as great and as popular as my story is, it's got nothing on the hospitality that Jesus offers us. Let's reclaim that type of hospitality. And let us do likewise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come to the portion of our service where we have an opportunity for generosity. You have four ways to give. You can partner with, our, with us financially in four ways. You can place any offering in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary by text at 248-283-4991 online 
at www.spumc.net or mail a check to the church. And now we are going to have some special music from He Touched Me, he touched me from the Chancel Singers. singing of the doxology. Tory prayer. Gracious God, as you have welcomed us with open arms, give us the courage to live with open arms. May we embrace a life of open hearts and open hands so that our gifts can go towards your kingdom. You have welcomed us when we are, were a stranger. May you use these gifts to welcome others. These are your gifts and we trust you to multiply them. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Welcoming others really begins in prayer. Being able to know that our needs, our prayers, are welcome in the sight of God. Whatever they may be. For when we know that God is hospitable to us, we can be hospitable to others. So that's what we're going to be praying about. So that's why our prayers are welcome in the sight of God today. So... If you have prayer requests, please feel free to raise your hand and share them. Or if you're worshiping online, please reach out to us during the week. We really do. Your prayer requests matter to us, too. And let us know how we can be praying for you. Yes, David. Absolutely. We'll pray for Mary's tests. We'll pray for your ear. That we'll pray, yes, our ad, church admin Kathy has been dealing with some health issues, was in the hospital um, this week, but is home now and um, being able to recover. Yes. We will definitely pray for your niece's family. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, Jack. We will pray for your aunt in ICU. Absolutely. We praying for your mother. Yes. You could, yes. Thank you. Pray for your friend, correct? Friends, let us pray. Holy One, hospitable God, God of welcome, God of gracious hospitality, we thank you that you have welcomed us, that you welcome all of us, that you welcome those we are praying for. God, we pray for Mary, David, Kathy, Cece and Victor's family, the Jacqueline, Jacqueline's aunt, Margaret, A family friend, the loss of her husband. Ukraine, and all our global crises, Lord. May we learn that we do not have to battle each other, and that instead we can live in a community of sharing of welcome. So God, open our eyes, open our hearts, and opens our minds. Allow us to see the people you are calling us to welcome. Allow us to see how to open our hearts, our minds, 
and the doors of our lives and even our church to fling them open wide to receive all those whom you have called us to, God. And God, as we pray, we know that there are individuals and people on our hearts and minds, maybe even ourselves, God. So we now lift those up in silence. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray, saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive of those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So friends, I hope you can realize how gracious, and maybe today you have realized how remarkably gracious and welcoming God is to all of you, to all of us, all that about ourselves, even the parts of ourselves that we wish weren't there, God welcomes that. That's who we want to be as a church, because that's who Jesus is. And there are lots of ways where we are going to get to do that in these coming weeks, um, some more business-related and some more spiritual-related. Uh, but this is not a one day, a, not a one day shop here. We got a lot of things going on. Um, of course, we've got our coffee hour right after worship. Um, you can join and have some goodies and spend some time together after that. Then also on the back table, um, for those of you who are wishing to serve as a liturgist, that sign up is there as well. Um, got the next couple of months to cover, so please, um, if you want to sign up be a liturgist or are interested in learning, it's on that back hospitality table. And then, this coming week, Hands with Detroit is this Saturday, a great opportunity of service um, that we will have to go down to Cass Community Social Services and do some good work together. Um, I'll be doing the morning shift at um, the paper shredding event, um, which again, this is not something of high skill needed. It is open to anybody. If it was high skill or required construction skills of any type, you better believe I would not be doing it. So um, that's this Saturday. You can either sign up at handswithdetroit.org or um, there are two shifts available, 9 to 12, 1 to 4, or you can do both. Some great opportunities to have a good time together and make a difference in our community. And then, next, that, not this Saturday, this Saturday, Hands with Detroit, then the next one that comes around, you'll have our MFSA, which is the Methodist Federation for Social Action, an event um, talking about anti-racism at Southfield Hope United Methodist Church. It'll also be live streamed on the Michigan MFSA Facebook page. This will be from 9 to 2.30. And if you could please register online, um, I can give you the link. Or if you want to be one of these new age fancy people, there is a QR code on this in the flyers around um, the church. Now, what's a QR code? How do you do it? Take out your phone, open your camera, and you zoom in on that little where it says scan me, and it will open up for you, give you the link to register, and your pastor might even be willing to help with you on that if you're interested. Again, that's May 6th, the cost is $30.
um, coming out for a, I think it'll be a really important event because ultimately this is also about hospitality and how we welcome all people and we need to mean all. And then um, after that, there is an event just down the road, May 18th. That's a Thursday. It will be um, an event focused uh, on gun safety, gun violence reduction. We have not gone a week without hearing about one of these. And how do we engage with this as Christians? Um, that's what we're going to talk about at Birmingham UMC. It'll be Thursday, May 18th, 7 p.m. in the Christian Life Center. So that is um, another opportunity for us to learn how we can make a difference in the world and what United Methodists are doing. And now, and this is a new note for us all, but this is a really important one, especially for those of you who are professing members of this church. A special call church conference is going to be had May 20th. That's a Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, this is to, again, try to have a vote about um, changing the charter of our endowment fund to allow us to be financially sustainable in the next however long. Um, please, please come in person if at all possible. Um, if we get people here on time, I can, with 98% probability, guarantee you it will take less than 10 minutes. Um, maybe even less than five, unless there is some extra discussion needed. Um, there will also be a Zoom option if you happen to be out of town, but um, for the sake of doing this well, making it official, please come in person if at all possible Saturday, May 20th. Start writing that down on your calendars. Um, yes, 11 a.m. Yep, 11 a.m. Let the rest of the church body know because we cannot vote on this unless there's 51% of our church membership here. That's just our rules. It's actually a good and understandable rule that was made, but right now we would need more people than are what here currently. That's just, that's what we have to go by. So call your friends, call people you haven't seen in a while, let them know, and if people don't live locally, they can join via Zoom. Um, so if you have any questions on what we'll be voting on or what that'll look like, please let me know. Um, if you're here last fall when you tried it, it's gonna be the same thing. But we just need these funds to be financially sustainable in the coming years. Okay? Are there any other questions or thought comments on what's going on in the life of our church? Amen. The Zoom will not run longer. The Zoom will be the same time as the conference. The goal will be if everyone can be here, seated down at 11 a.m., we'll open it up. Do a quick scripture reading, pray, because we still, of course, will pray. And then we will have one motion to present. Um, that, can, and it, that will be available to you before to look over and ask any questions of, okay? Friends, let us sing as people who have been welcomed by God. Amen? Please turn to your faith we sing. Uh, hymnals and turn to page 226. Uh, bind us together. 2226. We stand in Babel.
God has bound us together. But as God binds us together, we are not a closed circle, but an open circle to offer extravagant and abundant hospitality. Maybe that'll mean we welcome some strange alien for outer space. Unlikely. But you never know. But more than likely, it will mean that we have to welcome that annoying twit from high school who sat behind us and flicked spitballs at us. And Christian hospitality is for them and for all. Let's open our arms to whoever God sends us. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.